I'm joined once again by Justin Scoggins. This time in video form, he's going to be taking on Sad Nurmagomedov at UFC Fight Night 133 on July 14th. Justin, what's going on, man? How you doing? Uh, doing great, man. Just finished up a really good training session with my boy Cody Freeland. And uh, now, about to go run this dog, get him wore out. Stone. What is it? What is it? Look at that guy. You got him trained. You're like, uh, what, what's that uh, dog whisperer guy? You kind of remind me of that guy. That's awesome, man. Uh, how nice is that, you know, getting having an animal during training camp and, you know, just having a dog to kind of, you know, break things up a little bit. I know that's one of the responsibilities of a dog owner is you got to, you know, take him for walks and everything, but it must kind of break things up for you. Dude, yeah, man. It helps so much. Like, I really see why people, like, they have, like, stress, anxiety, get, like, support animals and stuff. Because uh, when I was actually living in Florida – training an American top team, you know, you go through those periods where you're, you know, you're kind of lonely, you're doing, you're, you're doing your own thing. And I was driving back from the beach one day and there's a sign that said puppy sale. And I was like, I'm very sporadic. So I was like, Oh, I got to check this out. At least went up in there, found my best friend. He's been with me ever since. Excellent. Uh, let's talk about you though. Uh, one thing I noticed, and I want to get your thoughts on this. I noticed you're not on social media anymore. You maybe you changed your handle or something, but no more Twitter. I don't think you have an Instagram either. What's going on with that? You just staying away from all that? Dude. Yeah. You know, along with like conspiracy shit that I look at on the internet and stuff, a couple like, I don't know. I'm not a conspiracy theorist or anything, but I definitely realized that like that kind of stuff, it draws your attention away when Really, you should be sitting around thinking about your fight. You should be thinking about the next training session, thinking about what you're going to eat and stuff. And, dude, it just – that stuff puts too much stress in you. It's too much stimulation, at least for me. Like, I got – I don't know. You call it ADD or whatever. Like I got the same thing, man. I got to put that phone down every once in a while because I'm the same way. I waste so much time looking at my phone. Yep. So, I, I hear you. No, I, 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 th- I, I think that's great. I'm back out of the woodworks, but, like, I've been in grind mode. I've been out in the woods. You know what I mean? So – no, I hear you, man. Um, you're supposed to fight Tim Elliott at a UFC on Fox 26 in December, and I know you had an injury. Uh, for those who don't know, what what was the injury and how long was the recovery time? Uh, the the exact name of the injury is a it's a spinous process fracture. It's a it's a little piece at the end of your vertebrae. I'm I'm not exactly sure, but uh, it snapped. I was dude, it was just a freak accident. I was out doing some cardio, running on nature trail, tripped up over some roots try to ninja roll out of the shit and uh i landed right on my back on these roots and then like i was trying to finish my workout doing mitts and i was like holy fuck dude like i can't even throw a punch right now you know what's going on and i i waited a day see if i could train and then i was like screw this i gotta go get x-rays and uh they were like yeah dude you you screwed your stuff up you gotta let that heal <laughs> uh, that sucks so so how, how long were you on the sidelines for like when, when were you allowed to get back to training dude i was like out of co- I could barely drive my car, man. I was out of training for like eight weeks before wow. I could get anything. So, but I, I eat pretty good. I keep my, like I used to not, I used to do it. I've been so fat before, <laughs> but like I've gotten that better under control. So I, at least I kept my weight down and in shape a little bit. I mean, even though I wasn't able to do anything. Right. No, I hear you there. Um, let's talk about this fight here. You're taking on uh, Sed Nurmagomedov, uh, who has no relation to Habib from what I hear. Um, what do you know about him? He's got an 11-1 record. How do you feel like you match up against him? Uh, we've studied film on him, man. We're taking him really seriously. Uh, I mean, but, you know, from, from what I've seen, he's uh, he's well-rounded. And uh, just the one quote that always like comes to me from Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee said something like, uh, like, if you train to be good everywhere – you're going to be weak everywhere. And he's like kind of the, one of those guys I've, I, from what I've seen where he's like, he's a good striker. He's a good grappler. He's a good wrestler, but nothing stands out. There's nothing that stands out. Like he's going to be in there, especially his first UFC fight with somebody that like, I know my abilities. I know I can take you down when I want to. I can hit you when I want to. If I don't want to get hit, I'll get on my bicycle and make you chase my ass. I mean, it's just, I think it's going to be a really good matchup for me. I know this dude's tough. He's, you know, like, he's going to take shots. So uh, if it goes three rounds, I'm ready for that, too. I'm in shape. I'm, I'm ready to just put on a show for the fans. You know what I mean? Like, it's been so long for me, dude. Like, having one of those performances to where I finally had everybody's just like, yeah, this is, the, this is that guy that's going to beat Demetrius Johnson, you know? Because, dude, my first two fights in the UFC, that's what I was hearing. That's what I was feeling, you know? And then, like, Life happens, shit happens, but, uh, dude, I've grown so, so freaking much, and all these losses, like, 
I look at them like blessings. Like when you suffer, that's when you, that's when you learn the most. And that's when you gotta, you gotta be thankful for the suffering. Yeah, no, no. I, I like that attitude. Um, how about training camp? Has it just been the same training partners for, for this fight? Dude, actually this training camp, it's, it's been I've whole, almost like a whole new system, man. Like I've never done, uh, I've always had like strength conditioning coaches, but I don't know. Sometimes I feel like these these guys like they they go to school for it and they understand it really well. But fighting's a whole different animal, and like you can train somebody to be in really good shape for football, but you try to translate that over to MMA and that person's not going to be in shape. They might be powerful and explosive, but it's, they're not in shape. So I've been doing a I've gotten on heart rate training, which I I mean. Screw it. I mean, it's not, I don't think it's a secret. I'm pretty sure that's like Mighty Mouse's thing. Like from what I've heard, it's like heart rate training all the time. So you always know where your zones are at. You always know where your heart rate's at. And you can literally throughout your training camp, watch yourself getting in better shape. And that it's just added confidence knowing, oh, I can, I can push my heart rate to a hundred percent and keep this thing there for 30 minutes straight. Let's, all right, let's bang. You know what I mean? Right. Interesting. Oh, that's that's a nice little tidbit there. Um, how about the uh, how about the weight cut? How's that going uh, as far as getting down to one twenty five? Oh, dude, like my like my last cut in Singapore, like I've got that that down so well now. Like just maturing and actually eating right and stuff, and learning how like l- learning what to eat. I mean, shit, most Americans don't know how to eat. You know, what right? I mean? I'm just now learning, and I finally got that down to where like my Singapore fight, dude. I, I woke up on weight. I didn't have to fucking kill myself in a sauna or anything. And uh, this time I'm good, you know what I mean? Like right now I'm sitting, I'm I'm killing all my water. I'm drinking a gallon, two gallons of water a day, and uh, I'm like 140 between 140, 143. Nice, well, that's good. A couple weeks out, that's not bad. Um, how do you see this fight playing out on July 14th? Mm, I mean, I I visualize it a lot, and the way I would like for it, if I if I the way I would like for it to play out is I'd like to go out there and you know, keep it on my feet. Don't let him tangle me up to where it's some boring fight or anything like that, or, or put myself in a bad position when I don't need to. I want to dance on this guy. I want to show my footwork. I want to show my hand speed, my kicks. That's what people like to see for me. You know what I mean? That's why I'm sure that's why people use me on the video game because they want a guy that can throw cool kicks and shit. You know? <laughs> that's so, true. Yeah. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do what I do the best of my ability. And hopefully the fans and the UFC and everybody appreciates it. What's next for you after this? I, I, you know, I know you're not looking past your opponent here, but I'm sure you want to, you know, probably a quick turnaround just to get the momentum going again. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've, I've been in shape. I've been ever since I got back from my my injury. I've been staying in shape. This has been a super long camp for me because I started camp before I even knew I had a fight. I was like, screw it. I was like, just put your mind on that. Just say you have a fight in your mind. Pretend you have a fight. And I started training like that. And then I got the fight. So. I'm ready to go now. I'm going to keep myself in shape, stay, uh, try to stay healthy, injury free, and you know, just beat this guy up really good. Because I've been in the UFC now long enough to where I feel like I go whoop this dude's ass in a really impressive manner. I can, I can call somebody out. I can make, I have a claim for a top ranked person. I beat Ray Borg's ass. That dude's up ranked in the top. I don't know if he's still in the top five, but he's up there. You know what I mean? So I think I got a case to at least give me a really good matchup after this. Well, we're looking forward to this fight, man. It's UFC Fight Night 133 coming up here July 14th. Justin, it was a great getting a chance to talk to you today. Just to remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you have any sponsors or shout-outs, the floor is yours, man. Uh, I know uh, my dad runs a, a fan page for me on Facebook. It's Justin Tank Scoggins. And uh, he's actually really good at messaging people back and getting messages to me so that you know I can reply to people as, as best as I can and stuff. So, uh, yeah, if you ever want to reach out or just leave some positivity on the page, uh, Justin Tank Scoggins on Facebook. What's up, Fight Fans? If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to see even more interviews with your favorite UFC and Bellator fighters. We've also got coverage at events, including post-fight press conferences and media scrums. And if you like this video, check out the video to my right. It's worth your time.